Yeah. All right, blocks out my gut. I like that. Hey, welcome back to The Average Kitchen. I'm super excited today. I've got a brand new Traeger Ironwood 650. Just got it, gonna unbox it, set it up. So, bonus to this Ironwood 650 came with this amazing starter kit. So let's open this up and see what I got. There we go. All right. First thing, new Traeger lid. Excited about that, I don't have a Traeger hat. What else do we got here? Okay, what's this now? Ah, okay. I don't know if you can, I can take it out of the package. Jamie, have a look at this. This is a Traeger Ironwood 650 Christmas, Christmas ornament. Pretty cool. What else do we have? Okay. All right, we got some really good Traeger products here. So we've got Traeger Dry Rub. This one is Prime Rib Rub. This one here is a Chicken Rub. And this one is a pork and poultry rub. And then we got two awesome barbecue sauces. We got an apricot barbecue sauce made by Traeger and a Traeger Q barbecue sauce. All right, and then we've got, if I can get it out here. Then we've got a cover for Ironwood, Ironwood 650. All right, so let me get rid of some of this cardboard and we'll open up the big boy here. Got my new bucket on, ready to rock. So I'm gonna cut this strap. One of them broke when I was taking it out of my truck, which is fine. So what do we got? Start here. Okay, I like the look of that. We got a power supply. Three power supplies, not sure why yet. Got an instruction manual, that's a good start. Quite a hefty instruction owner's manual. Okay, it's in three languages, English, French, and Espanol, it looks like. The assembly guide is likely what we're gonna be referring to here. And then we've got a uh, hardware kit. This obviously is our handle. This looks like one of our meat probes and a pretty cool Traeger sticker. I'm definitely a big sticker guy, I like stickers. Ah, oh, these are our legs, okay. Put that off to the side. Obviously that's the beast right there, but let's see what it says as far as the assembly guide goes. Read all instructions before using the grill. That's probably not gonna happen. So it says remove the grill and it's packaging. Okay, Jamie, you gotta zoom in on this. This is hilarious. So it shows at the beginning of step one, there's a six pack here. And as you're moving through your steps, your beer six pack is slowly deteriorating down to the end. That's actually pretty funny. It says you should assemble your grill on a clean flat surface and you'll need to lay on its back a couple times during the assembly. This will require two people. What do you think, Jamie? You think this is uh, where we're gonna have to put down the camera and both get involved here or what? I'm only one man, Jamie. Okay, we've removed everything from the box. What they suggest in the book is that you lay it on its back. So we've got a chunk of cardboard stuck on the back side here, obviously, to protect the finish of the uh, trigger itself. And you'll see that there's numbers in each corner which correlate to our wheels. So what we're gonna do now is work on getting our legs, wheels on, and uh, we'll go to the next step. I should mention as well, we took everything out of the internal bucket or the barrel of the uh, grill to make it a little bit lighter to try to manhandle um, to get these legs on. So I'm working off the hardware kit here. A little tricky to open it and not have everything shoot all over the place, but the first step, they, they want you to use uh, two A-bolts, which are a 5 16th uh, A-bolt. Then you're using uh, four flat washers, two lock washers, and two nuts. So you can see I've already fed the uh, two bolts through the corners here. So now we're just gonna go, I guess, washer, lock washer, nut. Washer, lock washer. That was the order they wanted, Jamie. One thing that my father-in-law taught me years ago when building stuff, and I am no, by no means an expert, but 
just hand tighten everything. And then once you make sure everything fits properly, then you can go through afterwards and sort of lock it all down. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'll try not to block the camera here, obviously. All right. So they also supply a wrench and an Allen key. So essentially, when we go time to tighten everything up, you'll throw your Allen key in here, hold it with your wrench, and then you'll torque it that way. So we'll move on to uh, do the next leg. So another reason why we only hand tighten is because somebody, not me, because I can't even see the numbers from here, put the leg, the first leg, the first thing we had to assemble, put it in the wrong place. So the good news is we can just loosen this up by hand, make sure you keep all your hardware, and then we're gonna pull these out. You had one job, Jamie. We will put it where it properly goes. So the legs were all numbered. Then it said to go on to part seven. So ours uh, was not numbered, but we figured out that this is part seven, which is the plate that is gonna go on either side of the legs here with the E-bolts. E-bolts. The mystery of the power supplies, I've never seen this before, uh, it came with four different power supplies. So European, likely Asian, maybe Australian, and then North American, which is actually plugged in here. So in case you're traveling, with the in case you're traveling doing air travel with your Ironwood 650, you may want to throw these in your suitcase for different options on plugging in. No, so obviously what they do is they just make them available uh, worldwide. Obviously the mechanics of it is the same, just the power supply is a little bit different. So I wouldn't throw these out. You never know when you may go to Vietnam and uh, hook up your Traeger, which I have been to Vietnam and loved it there as well. Now we're working on the shelf, stainless steel sh shelf, beautiful shelf. And we've got uh, some stainless steel hardware here that we're going to use as well as the provided screwdriver. All right, Jamie, so I'm suspecting it's right into these four spots right there. I believe you're right. Okay. You need a hand. Sure. So the next thing is, and I I own a trigger already uh, that I'm replacing. So the next step is uh, this is your grease drip tray. You'll see that it's already oiled, which is pretty normal the way they ship them. So I'll show you how they go in. So you'll see, obviously you have your drip bucket on your left hand side here, and you'll see Jamie. I don't know if you can look inside. You'll see there's an opening here which is where all your excess uh, grease and drippings are gonna go. So you'll also see there's a lip here on the side. So we're just gonna drop this in here and hook it on that lip and then it goes securely in, securely in place. It came with one of these Traeger aluminum foil protectors because you definitely wanna make sure that you're putting something over top of this because over time, uh, this would get so gummed up, it'd be beyond cleanable. What I've done with my previous Traegers is I just use aluminum foil and I almost make one of these, but this one happened to come with it. So it just sort of slides over top and sits in place like that. I believe the next step would be the grills because we pretty much don't have much left, much else left. Well, bucket I already did. This, this is beer number five. <laughs> this should be beer five. So this would be our top grill and you're standing on the other grill. Pretty heavy duty grill, actually, I must say. Ooh, nice, really nice. So that would slide in, presumably, like so. No, nope, I'm doing something wrong, I'd say that's upside down. There, now, I believe, I'm gonna try this out, I believe one of the features of the Ironwood 650 is that, no, never mind. that was, different model that has sli sliding rack. But this does slide, you just have to let, let it up a little bit, but you probably wouldn't do that. We'll see if we, okay. We're just outside of my garage here now, and I'm gonna throw some pellets in it. I'm not gonna fill it right now because I'm gonna have to eventually lift this up onto my deck, so I don't want it to add extra weight if I don't have to. So I think that'll be sufficient. 
plugged into the wall, there is a switch on the back. So don't forget to hit that switch. Turn this on, you can see the digital screen. Welcome to your Traeger grill. Season the grill. So let me grab the instructions. All right, owner's manual. It says press the standby button to wake the grill. So it says auger, prime auger. So it says auger priming, one minute, 30 seconds. So obviously the auger is what starts to pull your pellets. All right, so it says now priming complete. We'll see that there. So we'll hit done, turn dial. It says in the book to turn it to 350 Fahrenheit. It's only wanting to go up. Oh, it's in Celsius. Okay, so how do we switch that? Temperature units. Fahrenheit. All right, we fixed that first problem. So 350 and then pr press the dial. It says here to press ignite and close the, the uh, lid, which is different from my other Traeger that I had. As our, our grill is seasoning here, it's now up to 334 degrees. I'm going to uh, set up uh, the new grill on the Traeger app. So I just figured out how to do screen recording on my phone. So Jamie's gonna embed that into the video so it should show you.